Hi, I'm Dave Hobbs, Senior Instructor for Delphi Technologies. If you're an advanced service technician, you're going to want to watch this technical tip on the new three-phase brushless DC fuel pumps. A lot of vehicles have been using these starting in about 2011 and gaining a lot of popularity with Volkswagen and others in 2014 and this Toyota now in 2018 and 2020 a lot of cars are having the three phase fuel pumps. Now what's different and why do you need to know about it? Well they're located in the fuel tank just like always. So like on this RAV4 you pull the bench seat out and you go to work when you've got a no start and no fuel delivery. But what's different is how they work and how you diagnose them. So watch these tech tips and learn a brand new kind of fuel pump that you're going to want to know how to diagnose correctly. Well, Just to get a picture of what we look like here, I'm going to take this pump assembly cover off and show you we've got a little clump of wiring here, two connectors. One is for the senior unit, this one over here for the pump. But as you'll notice we've got a little black wire and a little green wire, a little blue wire, and those are the three phases and this little brown wire with a little splice connection right here, that's a shield. So let's go ahead and do some diagnostics on it, only instead of back probing here, let's go to the, prop, the part on the car that controls the wiring and the flow of current to this part, the fuel pump, the fuel pump control module. Well, the best place to catch any readings on a three-phase fuel pump is at the fuel pump control module. Now, on this RAV4, it's in the back right here. So I took a little trim down, five minutes or less of work, and I get to it. I've got the factory service schematic right up here. Here is the module, and here is the fuel pump. So I want to get on the fuel pump wire that are the outputs of the module. So three wires go to this pump instead of just power and ground, it's three wires. So we're gonna look and see what that looks like with the voltmeter. And if the voltmeter doesn't help us, and I guarantee you it's not gonna be much help, we'll use a four channel lab scope. All right, so I back probed all three of the three phases, UVW, as this model calls it out. And so the next thing I'm gonna do is use my ground to check between chassis ground, that's a good ground there, and the red lead of my meter, it's gonna to go to DC volts, and I'm gonna plug into one of these three phases, we'll plug it into the black wire, which is phase W, it's W. I'll plug it into W, that's going down to that fuel pump, I'll load the seat cushion, and the key on engine stop, we don't see anything, just a quarter of a volt. Let's go ahead and fire this engine up. All right, so we back probed into one of the three phases, W to be precise, with the red lead of the voltmeter on DC, the black lead to chassis ground, and we're getting about six volts. And you may think, gee, that's not what I'm used to. I'm used to seeing 12 volts. If the engine's running, maybe 14 or 15 at the fuel pump. That's a good thing. You got a relay working, you don't have an open circuit with an inertia switch or something like that. And obviously it's running, the fuel pump's working. But what if the fuel pump wasn't working? You had a no start. It starts on starting fluid, all right? So you think, okay, I've got to check out this fuel pump, but what kind of voltage should I see if the computer, the PCM, is sending the fuel pump control module a signal and the fuel pump control module's doing its thing and sending this new style of three-phase fuel pump like this one from a VW, very much similar, three wires and a shield, a noise shield type of ground. So the same thing is coming out of this module to that pump in the tank under the seat. So how do I interpret the voltage? Well, known good vehicles is one thing and a scope's gonna be a bigger help than this voltmeter. Let's go ahead, and for Grins, let's go ahead and see what the pressure is right now on a known good working RAV4. So I'll say next on the scan tool, I've got the factory scan tool up. And as soon as I get to the, uh, the list of modules, I'll select engine control. Select engine control module. 
We're going to go into a bi-directional command here in a minute. I'm going to turn the key off and do this the other way. Because if you got a vehicle that won't run, you're going to need, and it's sitting there, and you do, obviously it's not going to even try to make the fuel pump work unless you're cranking it. Maybe a few seconds for prime. That's been the tradition for, what, 40 years of engine controls. But in this case, we're going to need a scan tool that can do a bi-directional control. If you have a, a crank but won't start issue, and it's a fuel-related issue, you're going to want to control the fuel pump control module, a bi-directional command, from your scanner. I'm going to use the factory scanner to do that. So we'll go into... Uh, Right now we'll do active tests and we'll do a key on engine stop and do this active test. All right, so our engine's running, the vehicle has no problems, three phase fuel pump, back probing the W of the UVW, the three phases between that wire and chassis ground, regular voltmeter on DC, no frequency or duty cycle selected, just volts. And it's about 6.8 volts. That should be a mind bender right now. Known good working vehicle, wire going to the fuel pump, a power wire to the fuel pump, 6 volts. What's up? Three phase fuel pump, that's what's up. Now I'm looking at a data PID. I've got the bi directional command the active test set up on the factory scan tool and I'm not doing anything yet, I'm just letting it run, and it's sitting there about 30 PSI. Okay, so that's what the low side coming into this GDI, uh, GDI and SFI combination system on this D4S engine, that's what it's running out of the tank, 30 PSI and 6 volts. Just for grins, let's see if there's any frequency element, because I've got a nice meter that does frequency and duty cycle. So as I hit the Hertz button, and it is 12.5 with a K before the HZ. So 12,500 times a second. That fuel pump control module is pulsing one of those three phases. So 12.5 kilohertz. That's certainly out of my hearing. I don't know how high a frequency you can hear, but that's the reason they run high frequencies to electric motors for duty cycle. Now we go into the time on versus off which is duty cycle, 64% of the time on versus off. Actually, it's kind of backwards from what we saw, what we're going to see with our bi-directional control, but that's probably 64% of the time it's off and 35% of the time it's on. All right, now let's just do a quick key on engine stop because let's think about it. When you diagnose a fuel pump in the field, it's usually because it's not running. Occasionally, you've got maybe drivability problems. You want to see if you have a fuel delivery issue, not enough pressure, not enough volume. But sometimes, and most more often than not, actually, you got a no start. Gets towed in on a hook, and you've got to figure out is it air fire fuel you figure out it's fuel okay is it a fuel pump computer injectors whatever so in this case if you had a key on engine stopped no start let's see what that would look like with a three-phase fuel pump all right turn return my meter back to just good old-fashioned volts so if you were doing this now normally you have to crank the engine or turn the key on for a few seconds to get that initial prime, and then you know the fuel pump shut off, right? Well, this fuel pump's no different than any others in that respect. So, we're seeing 13.4 volts. Let's say you had a, a no start issue, and it was a fuel delivery issue. You sprayed starting fluid in it, it came to life. You're trying to check the fuel pump out. This is a fuel pump that's not running right now. You look at the pressure, on the data parameter, if we were to update that, it'd say zero PSI. So we have no pressure, the pump is not running, it's getting 13 volts. We're not pulsing it, that's the difference. So let's go ahead and do a bi-directional command of the pump. So we'll go in here to our active controls and our factory scan tool, and we'll select fuel pump, control the fuel pump duty cycle ratio, 17% or 35%, those are my choices. So, and you have to do it with the key on, engine stopped. Just like you do any bi-directional control, turning on a simple fuel pump relay on a good old fashioned DC two wire pound and power and ground type pump. This is gonna do a three phase control, telling that control module to send the three phases to the pump at the low duty cycle of 17%. I can hear the pump running. We see the six volts again. And we'll see the same frequency, about 12, 1,500, 12.5 kilohertz, 
and about the same duty cycle, about 65% off versus on, back to six volts. Let's go to high speed. And by the way, what is our pressure? If we look at our low side of the pressure at 74 PSI, we cook it to high. You may actually be able to hear that in the microphone. That pump's running and the voltage change a little bit. It is now 91 PSI. What does the frequency look like? Uh, the frequency is about the same, 12.8 kilohertz. The duty cycle has now went to 62. So not a lot of difference. So what's this telling us? It's telling us that a digital multimeter is not the best instrument to use to check fuel pumps that are three-phase design. All right, so we just changed to the different phase, phase U instead of V or W, and it's the same frequency, duty cycle, and voltage. So go to high, go to low, not much difference. So again, it's gonna be the same on all three phases. They're just gonna be timed 100 degree, 20 degrees apart as you look at 360 degrees in a circle. That's how three phase motors work. Just like you'd see on that Prius or other hybrid vehicle with the big three phase orange cables, only no high voltage, high current. This is low current and very low voltage, but it's the same idea. Now let's go ahead and check out the current since we're talking about current. Uh, what would the current be using a digital volt ohm meter? Let's check that out next. So here we go, take an amp clamp, pop out our meter leads. This is gonna be one of those inductive meters that we'll have to convert the voltage in millivolts to amps. So I've got it on one millivolt equals 100 milliamps. We turn it to millivolts. That's what this thing does. We'll zero it. There it's zeroed. I'm gonna put it around one of these wires here. See if we can get one of these out in the open. And we'll get on this green one right here, or the blue one, whichever we can get to. There we go. So I'm gonna check the current draw and see if a digital meter is fast enough to really do a decent job because we know that fuel pump current is relational to what the work the fuel pump's doing. If it's not having enough current, we either have a voltage drop causing that lower current or we've got the fuel pump not doing much work so i've got the lead the meter on the other way let's make it positive there we go so now we multiply that 1.6 times let's see one millivolt equals 100 milliamps so that would be one point or about two times 200 so what is that going to be? About 200 milliamps. Jeez, uh, that doesn't make much sense. That's not much current, but this pump is running. Let's go to the high speed to see what the meter can sell us there. So it did go up. So one millivolt equals 100 milliamps. We have two millivolts, so we have 200 milliamps, not even, not even not even a half an amp, 200 milliamps. That's 0.2 amps. That's too low. So is this pump not working? No, we don't know how to diagnose it yet, or we're actually, we know how to diagnose the pump. We're just not using the right tool. Let's use a scope now. Let's see what all these things look like with a four channel digital lab scope. All right. so. A lab scope has really saved the day to see what's going on with a three-phase fuel pump. Now I took the first three channels, A, B, C, the blue, the red, and the green traces, and I simply back probed them into the fuel pump control module. The three phases of power that we're seeing about six volts, but it was a little flaky in high frequency, 12.5 kilohertz down to the pump when you use the meter. Now we're using the scope. 
and we can verify that these are about, you look at these, uh, these scales over here on the, on the left, and it goes really kind of below and above zero. It's, but it is about six volts for each of the phases, and you can look at them left to right, and you can see each of these little humps, these phase pulses, are about 100, not about, they're exactly 120 degrees apart from each other. And then on the, the same uh, phase, blue, which is phase U, that you can see if you go straight up from the, the tan right here, that's, ch that's channel D, delta I, all right? That is commensurative right up here with the U of the UVW3 phases. So this is one of the channels looking at current with an amp clamp. And we see the current, we go over here, look at our scale, our current starts here at zero and it goes up to a little bit, about four, four and a half amps positive, And it also goes down here. If I move this little, little, uh, bi-directional control out of my way, there we go, from the scan tool, we can see it goes below zero volts, zero amps, and it goes down to about four, almost five negative amps. So this is getting an AC type of a characteristic that we're not used to as techs doing current ramping on fuel pumps. If you're a technician who has current ramped fuel pumps for years, you're now doing something brand new and radical, and you heard it here from Delphi Technologies. This is Dave Hobbs, Senior Instructor for Delphi. Thanks for watching. Good luck with those new three-phase pumps.